Great, thank you. Uh, welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting, October 30th, 2014. Selectman Caruso will be participating remotely today because of an unavoidable out-of-town travel, and this is in accordance with the Town of Sherburne Board of Selectmen policy on remote participation and the regulations of the Attorney General's office on that subject. Peter, can you hear us? Yes, I can, and I apologize for the inconvenience, but uh, I hear you fine. Thank you. Good. I'm, I'm going to ask Peter if you could talk very clearly when you talk and enunciate, and it will help us hear you. We'll do my best. Thank you. All votes will be taken by roll call vote. Anyone interested in speaking or providing comment must be recognized by the meeting chair before speaking. And once recognized, all speakers must come to the front of the room to be near the phone equipment, regardless of how brief the comment may be. Before offering a comment, the speaker must identify themselves by their first and last name every time they are recognized, and additionally should provide their home address the first time they are recognized. If a communication problem is encountered, we will take a brief break and try to resolve the issue. If the line disconnects, the remote participant is responsible for trying to reestablish the connection by dialing back into the phone system. If the problem cannot be resolved in a few minutes or continues to occur, the use of the equipment will be stopped. And we ask that uh, you keep background noise, conversations, and speaking uh, out, of, uh, out of turn uh, to a minimum and ask that you remain quiet through the meeting unless you've been recognized to speak. Uh, and now, uh, I guess we will ask our uh, town administrator to read the agenda, please, David. Sure. First, we'll uh, vote to approve or amend the agenda and add topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance. And to my knowledge, there are no uh, none of those items right now. And then a public comment period of 10 minutes. And then public hearings for transfer of liquor licenses involving Sherburne In and Sherburne Out. And then routine business, we're looking at um, appointments for the Historic District and Elder Housing Committee. And then we'll talk to the Revenue Development Committee about a request for a new charge. And then a town administrator's report with some financial update. And then under select bus Selectman Business, uh, we'll look at the town, I mean the uh, Selectman calendar, set the next meeting, look at upcoming topics, approval of minutes, and look at uh, a couple of items um, involving the warrant for discussion. And then executive session um, to discuss a claim of damages and potential litigation with respect to public works operations, and also to discuss CM&D collective bargaining agreement. Mm -hmm. And that will be um, executive session and not to return to open session. Okay, good. Do we have any, any uh, amendments to that agenda or changes? Okay, hearing none, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Selectman Durances? Second. Uh, Selectman Caruso seconded. All in favor, aye. Uh, Selectman Caruso? Aye. Selectman Durances? Aye. And I'm aye also. Good. So uh, we've approved the agenda and we're off to the races. Um, and now we have public comment. And Diane, who, uh, or David, who do we have signed up? Uh, for public comment, we have Nancy Hess regarding taxes and Elliot Taylor um, regarding the two minute rule. I guess we'd rather talk about taxes. Some want to talk about taxes, others don't. <laughs> uh, Nancy Hess, 64 South Main Street. Um, I'm here because it's been a very busy month and this is the 11th hour on the real estate taxes. And someone asked me today if coming in and paying when they come to vote on Tuesday would be okay and it would not. So I just want to remind everybody, because November 1st falls on the weekend, you do get the extra day Monday, but after Monday, your interest is calculated at 14% back to the date of issue. So you get a month's worth of interest in, on our tax bills. That's significant. So I'm just trying to remind people, we are going to be open tomorrow. We're not usually open on Friday, but we are going to be here from 8 until 1.00. And I would urge anybody who can to come down and take care of it, not wait until Monday. And remind also that you can pay online on the uh, Unibank. If you come to the town website, follow the Unibank uh, link, you can pay any time, night or day, and be done with it. 
So just so that no one is confused about the fact they've got to come down and vote on Tuesday, you cannot do your tax business on Tuesday. Uh, Monday is the last day, and we are open until 6 on Monday. After that, you get hit with interest, and I have no control over that. That's by state law. Okay? Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. So everyone is warned. Elliot, Elliot Taylor will now uh, speak as part of public comment. Elliot Taylor, 30 North Main Street, Sherburn, Mass. <clears throat> there should be an article on the next town meeting warrant that would limit a speaker's time to five minutes rather than the present two minutes. Often, two minutes is not enough time to get the message presented. So I think that the selectmen should uh, just put this on and uh, and we'll go from there. But uh, this this two minutes is outrageous, undemocratic, should be unconstitutional, and uh, so that's my request. Thank you. Th thank you, Elliot. Okay, and uh, we we've, we've had a lot of people come in here, so I'm just going to mention we have a selectman. Selectman Caruso is participating by remote participation, which means. This is Selectman Caruso tonight. He's not here. He's out of town, but he is participating in the meeting, which means we have to keep all the, the conversation in the crowd at a minimum, and anyone who wants to speak needs to come up to the microphone, identify themselves, and speak into the microphone when, uh, when recognized. So uh, just those are the ground rules for today. All right, the next subject, I guess, is, and we have to wait until 6.15. Is this an advertised hearing? Yes. Okay, you're, you're so we're going to hold off on that hearing. Yeah, uh, you can move to the um, board do appointments. Have, do we have minutes to approve or anything like that? We have, we have appointments? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's look at the appointments. David, you want to go over what we're doing as far as appointments are? Yeah, currently um, there are a couple of seats open on the Historic District Commission. Uh, the applicants are Marianne Clancy for a three-year term expiring June fifteenth, two 2017, and Alicia Goody three-year term expiring June 15, 2017. Move those appointments as read. Okay. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Seconded by Selectman Caruso. I'm going to have to take a roll call vote again. Um, Mr. Durensis. Votes aye. Mr. Caruso. Aye. And uh, my vote is aye also. So uh, three to zero, and we've now appointed three new uh, town volunteers and thank two. you very much for their service. I'm sorry, two new town volunteers no, no, and thank I'll, you for their service. I'll fix that by now you're appointing moving the elder housing. That uh, Janet Walsh be appointed to the elder housing committee for a three year term expiring June 15, okay, I'll second 2017. That. And uh, we'll take a, any discussion on that? Okay, uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Selectman Caruso. All right. Selectman Durensis. Aye. And I'll be aye on that also. And I understand that we are replacing uh, a member of the committee, uh, Joseph Cashin, and thanking him for his service. And he uh, has been appointed as an associate member by the committee itself. You want me to um, lead the uh, read the uh, list of vacancies we have? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there, kill a few minutes. There are current um, currently vacant seats on the following. There's one seat on the Cable TV Advisory Committee, one seat on the Disability Advisory Committee, three seats on the Energy Committee, two on the Groundwater Protection Advisory, um, one, on the, one seat on the Personnel Committee, one seat on the Recycling Committee, three seats on the Revenue Development Committee, which we'll be talking about soon, one on the Town Center Water Options Committee, uh, preferably someone from the uh, business district. And then one seat vacant on the Wildlife Management Advisory Committee, which will also be coming in in a few weeks to talk to the selectmen. So we've really whittled down the number of seats that are vacant. So we have, according to this piece of paper, it looks like we have 23 open vacancies, is that right? And you can take these three off, so we got 20. 20, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Good work. Thanks. Okay, we have two minutes until our hearing, what... Uh, How about approving minutes? 
that's why I was wondering I, if we had minutes to approve. Can I move to approve the minutes of July 24th, August 21, September 18th, and September 25th? I second. Okay, and so everybody's had a chance to review those? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. All right, and so we have it moved and seconded uh, Selectman Caruso. Aye. Selectman Durancis. Aye. And I'm I also. So we've uh, got those taken care of. Thank you, Diane, for getting those to us. We're almost caught up, it looks like. Pretty close. Good, good, good. And. You could set the next meeting. Should we set the next meeting, David? <laughs> <laughs> I move that we set the next meeting for Thursday, November 13, 2014. I'm going to check my calendar before we do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that is the date. Uh, sorry. Okay, I will not be available November Thursday, November 13th. You will. I wonder if we could do a, maybe a Friday morning meeting that week, or a Tuesday night, or a Wednesday night. You, you Wednesdays are bad for you, Paul. Wednesday evening or Friday morning? Wednesday evening or Friday morning, Paul? Either one of those? I have a... Uh, <coughs> if we could start late, I could do it on the 12th. Which is Wednesday. Okay, let's do a 7 o'clock meeting on, on the 12th. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, 7 o'clock on the 12th, though. So we have a motion to do a 7 o'clock on the November 12th for our next meeting. Uh, we have a second. Second. Okay. And so, uh, all in favor, uh, Selectman Caruso? Aye. Selectman Durancis? Aye. And I'll be aye. Okay, we just voted to set our next meeting. And guess what? It is close enough to 6.15 that we can read the hearing notice. David, you want to do that? Yep. Town of Sherburn, notice of public hearing. The Sherburn Board of Selectmen holding a public hearing tonight, Thursday, October 30th, 2014, at 6.15 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, 19 Washington Street, on the application of LJM Hospitality, Inc., Joshua Ziskin, manager for the transfer of a vic common victory license to expose, keep for sale, and to sell all kinds of alcoholic beverages at 33 North Main Street. Immediately following, the Sherburn Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on the application of Millie and B Incorporated, Jennifer Ziskin, manager for the transfer of a retail package goods store license at 33A North Main Street. Oral and written comments are invited. And, and David, uh, set the context for this if you could. Yeah. There are, um, there are two different applica applications that you'd be looking at, um, and both are related to the new owners of the Sherburn Inn. One is for the transfer of a common victuals license for the Sherburn Inn, and the other is uh, transfer of a retail package goods store license for the Sherburn Out. Uh, according to the ABCC, an owner of a restaurant and a package store cannot hold two licenses, which is why the Ziskins are filing under two separate names. And the board, of, uh, the abutters have been notified. The public hearing was um, ran and um, Basically, the, the approval of the filing by the Board of Selectmen sends it to the ABCC for uh, their investigation and review. And is, so is this a final approval, or this is just an approval to start the process? To start the process, and it will come back to you if it meets the approval of the ABCC. And at that point, is there another hearing, or is this the hearing? Um, this is the I, hearing, I think. This is the hearing. This is the hearing. Okay, this, yeah, this oh, is the this hearing. Is, I yeah, no, okay. that's, that's the substance. But I just want to make sure everybody's got the ground rules. So, uh, do we have somebody here representing the applicant or from the applicant? Okay. Uh, so, uh, whoever wants to talk, probably go up there and sit by the microphone. Which license are we doing? Uh, I think we should do the first license that was read first, which this is, is for the LJM Hospitality Inc. Transfer of a common victuals license for the Sherburn Inn, Joshua Ziskin, LJ, LJM Hospitality Inc. Okay, so could you identify yourself? Sure, my name is Josh uh, Ziskin. I re uh, live in Needham, and we own a restaurant in Brookline. Uh, we have owned a restaurant in Brookline for the last uh, almost 11 years. And we're excited about the opportunity to purchase and run the Sherborne Inn. What, what restaurant in Brookline? Uh, it's called La Mora. Okay. On Route 9, right before you get to the uh, hospital district, I guess. Okay. Do you have a, a 
alcohol license there? We do. We have a full liquor license. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, Paul? Or? Yes. Well, this ask the public crowd if there's, public, if there's public comments. Yeah. Does anybody else have any comments? Mr. Taylor. <clears throat> Elliot Taylor, 30 North Main Street, 100 feet from the Sherbin Inn. Uh, yeah. We were assured 30 years ago that there'd be no objectionable lights or noise from the Sherbin Inn. And the town passed a bylaw saying there'd be no outdoor entertainment at any Sherman restaurant. So uh, I've objected for 25 years or more about the lights that shine on my house from the Sherman Inn. There's about nine of them. And uh, until these lights are Shaded to my satisfaction, I'm, I object to any permits granted to the Sherbin Inn. Shut the damn place down until they put some shades over their lights to my satisfaction uh, because no one in Sherbin should have to put up with what I have put up with from the Sherbin Inn. We also have a bylaw that says no outdoor entertainment at any Sherbin restaurant. In the past three years, there have been large parties with band music, and uh, I've objected at the zoning meetings, no outdoor entertainment. And they've gone ahead, they've had their entertainment, and I've called the police each time and said, I object to the noise. Along with this uh, outdoor entertainment, we also have a bylaw that says there'll be no objectionable noise. I have objected. So until I can be assured that uh, there'll be no further outdoor entertainment and noise coming from the Sherbin Inn uh, that I object to, I'm opposed to any uh, permits for the place. There's also a 130 seat maximum uh, that was set up 30 years ago so that there would be no large parties at the Sherbin Inn. So until I can get something in writing saying that they'll, they'll stick to this 130 seat maximum Again, I am opposed to any uh, privileges for the Sherbin Inn. I want to see the place shut down uh, until they'll stop shining their lights on my house and no outdoor parties and no loud noise and have the building inspector check on this 130 seat maximum. Years ago, we had a building inspector that did check on this but I don't think it's happened in 20 years. So, uh, as I say, I live there. I've been complaining over and over and over again. The Sherbin Inn has just sat there, kept their light shining on my house. And what, 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 what can I say? What can I do? I, if uh, I had a neighbor that was complaining the way I've complained, I wouldn't dare not to uh, satisfy them. I'd be afraid that I'd get, well, won't say it. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other uh, comments, public comments? On this particular license? No? Okay, we'll open it up to the selectmen. Uh, selectman Caruso, anything? Uh, no, I just want uh, uh, to say I welcome the new owner to the Sherman Inn said we served the community very well in the past and uh, before getting 
Yes. Okay. First, I also welcome you to Sherburn. I think you'll find this to be a, a wonderful community. Some might even say better than Needham and better than other places you've been. This is a pretty special community. I, I had some questions about um, your plans for the end, are you planning any um, changes in the premises where the alcohol is served? Yeah. Uh, the, the general layout of the inn will remain the same. Uh, it'll be, you know, just upgrades but the general, the bar will most likely be in the same position that it's in in the tavern portion, and then in the, the banquet room, the bar most likely will be in the same position it's in. It'll just be remodeled, updated, new paint, floors, not not any general, not any uh, grand schemes of moving anything or grand construction going on. And do you have uh, any? entertainment proposed for the facility? Uh, I'm not sure where, if there's a current uh, live music license on the inn or not. Um, we'd like to, for the weddings and whatever venues, banquets that we hold, we would like the option of having live music. Uh, you realize that's a separate license, yep. we're only doing the alcohol yep. here, but I'm yep. just asking for yep. background purposes. The uh, presence of entertainment is, is a slightly different flavor than a restaurant without entertainment. Right, right. So you, you, but you are contemplating... Yeah, not, on a, not more to accommodate the, the weddings and functions than as a, a rule of course as far as a nightly music scene. Um, we haven't, that has not been our focus, our, our interests. I know there is currently shows go on there and uh, they have music, live music there occasionally. But right now it's not in our, our current plans as of dis as we have discussed. So it's more of just running the restaurant, uh, the banquet facility, um, as, as is really. And what about any changes in hours of operation? Uh, not now. No interest in late night bar business, uh, you know. We don't have it at our restaurant. It's not a business that we're really interested in getting uh, interested in getting into. So, are, would you are you looking for us to, to in the transfer of the license to keep the hours the same, or do you want different hours specified in the license? Uh, I'm not sure. I have to look. The same. Yeah, the same hours. I didn't. I didn't see the existing license here. Do you have that anywhere? Yeah, it's a it's a transfer of a license. So normally on a transfer, you have the license that's being transferred here for us to look at. There, there's a lot of information here. I'm not sure all of it made its way into our packet, but there is a lot of information here. More yeah, I do have. So you want me to go ahead? Well, might, might as well. We'll wait for okay. Kevin. I'm not sure what the uh, number of seats are that are going to be specified in the license, but there was a reference to 130 in a, in a comment from the public. What is the, the seating capacity that you will be operating with? Uh, whatever the town allows, you know. It's similar to the same footprint, so unless there's been changes in the law, and uh, we're, we we expect to keep it the same. 
there's a number on your application where it says seating capacity 245. Is that the consi consistent with the current? I believe so, yeah. on the application well the numbers the numbers on this form at least are a little different it says total square footage 3,532 square feet and this says 15,645 square feet I don't, and I don't know what the discrepancy there is is that the, is that the second floor the difference or yes well that that when you do that in the license that means that they can have room service with alcohol in the rooms right 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 and so it sounds like he doesn't want to have alcohol. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to understand. Um, this is only a restaurant license anyway, right? No, this I is mean, the... This is a restaurant alcohol license, right? Yes, it's a, both yeah. the Victor are in the... the uh, but this application alcohol. itself is not the, is not the common Victor is what I'm saying. <coughs> State law combines the two for purposes of alcohol establishments. No, I understand that's what we issue, but this is an application just for the alcohol beverage license. I don't think the state's passing on the on the in component unless I'm mistaken. Uh, no, it does not. So that may account. I'm just saying that may account for this discrepancy. I don't. Know, can you explain where these numbers came from? I'm, not sure which I'm I'm looking at your form. Sorry, this this form. The information we got from the, 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 the square footage they did give us. Okay, so well, there's a pretty significant difference here. I don't know if you have a chance to try to straighten that out, but yeah, the, li the license talks about licensing a, a premises of fifteen thousand six hundred and forty-five feet, and this application is three thousand five hundred and thirty-two feet. That's a significant retraction of space yeah, that's, under the license. I just want to be sure you're deliberate about that, that that's not a mistake. So we don't have to redo this at a later date. Right. That might be the out. Well, the out here is at least licensed for 800 square feet. Okay. And the license for the in is currently how many square this feet? This says one building approximately 15,645 square feet on two floors and an outdoor patio of approximately 2,400 square feet adjacent to the main dining room. So I think it's just a typo. Should be the 15,000. Yes, Peter. Um, I'm not sure I have that information of the fact that it's set more online. Whatever you're looking at, I'm not able to look at. Right, we don't. We, there's, there's one package here with a signed application that's in front of us, Peter, but that was not part of the distributed package. It's about an inch and a half thick. Okay. And it's the it's the actual original forms that they filled out for their um, for their application. Okay. That, uh, I understand. Just a have, typo. That should have been part of the. Yeah, it's, well, package. I read everything that was given to me. It was only. Like mm -hmm. two or three pages. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not. It's not just that, but even even if it's, you know, the package is one issue. I guess the other issue, though, is what is it that they've actually applied for? Well, that's why I was asking the question. Yeah, exactly. And we have uh, hours of operation listed here. That's what the question was originally, right? What was one of my questions, and the hours on the on the restaurant is from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to midnight, Friday and Saturday, and Sundays 11 to 11. Mm -hmm. so we're going to 
your request is a transfer of this license. So the net effect of that request is we're going to transfer, if we, if we vote yes, we will transfer those hours unless you want something different. And if so, this is the time to tell us what you want. Those were the hours we intended. Okay, good. And incidentally, the laws changed on Sundays, and you have a right to open at 10. You probably know that from your other restaurant. Okay, so so I'm I'm wondering where our fifteen thousand number came from, Paul, because they have this broken down as tavern nine hundred and forty five feet, main dining room sixteen thirty six, keeping room three sixty, bullard room three six thirty six, coolage room two fifty five, total to three five three two square feet, plus kitchen, bathroom, hallways, etc. And then they have the, the rooms listed on the second floor and the wine cellar listed. It's possible that the, all this additional space is the kitchen and the bathrooms and the hallways, I guess. I don't know. I think well, it's the outside, to be honest. You think it includes, well, this, this though, says 15645 plus an outdoor patio of 2400. That's the existing license. So I just don't know where your numbers came from, and I, obviously I don't know that. But I, I, do you know where the numbers came from? Uh, just the information that we received from uh, Blueprints and... Are you going to operate an inn? Uh, eventually, we, we'd like to... It's not our main focus in the beginning. But there are four rooms that are currently being... Well, might I suggest to you that... Um, it, let me put it this way. If I, if I was operating an inn or a hotel, I would like to be able to do room service. So I would want the common victor license and the alcohol license to go to cover those rooms so that I can have someone bring to a room a meal with maybe a beer or a wine. And if you only ask for what you appear to be asking, you can't do that with those rooms. But again, it's hard to match up the numbers with um, the numbers that you're asking for. That was just a typo. That's definitely, it's the one that is, the correct one is the one on the current license, the 15,645 square feet. So you want, you want the whole thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, that, that's, that's nice to say, and, I, and that may be right. It just doesn't correspond to your very detailed breakdown of the size of the first floor and the second floor and the wine cellar here. So that's why it's confusing. This must have come from someplace last year. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe it's just been carried over year to year. I, I don't. I don't really know what to do with this. That was a, a objecting that people aren't identifying themselves. So uh, okay. We could bring it back on the seventh. Well, there's two speakers now at the bench, and one hasn't identified herself. And I guess I spoke a few times and haven't okay. identified myself. But I, I thought I had the floor, and then I think you did get interrupted. The so I'm not sure Peter knows who who's talking. Who is who? Peter, you you clear on who was talking? Uh, yes, uh, you're, you're very clear. Paul is not very clear. Uh, and the applicants who uh, have been sitting at the table are uh, difficult to hear on the other. Okay, so so I, what what we're doing now, Peter, is trying to resolve a discrepancy between last year's uh, license, which was fifteen thousand six hundred and forty-five square feet, and this year's uh, request. Yeah. Okay. So so these so are these are materials that are not in front of me. These are materials you have in that big bar. Yeah, I, yes, and these are in the materials that you do not have. This is the actual original application form. Right, I understand. I, you know, so, so I, I guess here's, here's the question. You've got an application in front of us 
involving 3,532 3, square feet, you have a very detailed breakdown of the rooms, which totals to that number. So I guess, you know, I'd, I'd be inclined if we were going to pass it along to the state, we would pass along that request. I just am a little uncomfortable on your behalf with knowing that last year, for some reason, the approval was for 15,000 square feet. And I don't know if there's anybody else here who can shed any light on that, but... Uh, David, you've got some. Well, the license application matches this, the 15,000. So last year's license application said 15,000 square feet? Well, this is this is the one that we were submitting for the renewal. Let me yeah. see. That comes from the alcohol Paul beverage commission. Well, well, yeah, they, well, they would obviously reflect what was on this, right? No, because that's where we got the original square footage. She has to come up here. You can't hear that. Uh, Jamie Guthrie has to identify herself and come to a microphone because one of us is participating remotely. And it's not fair to the person who's not here to, to have discussion going on that nobody this can hear. <laughs> um, we just got the renewals from the ABCC, and the square footage, including the patio, um, has come from the ABCC the last several years. And that's what... Um, that's what we base our license on, is what is on record at the ABCC. So whether or not they came from the original permit 30 years ago or what, but that's w where we stand with it. Well, here, here's my concern. I, I'm inclined this is to... Selectman Durant's is talking. Yes, yeah, Selectman Durant's. Is, I'm inclined to grant the transfer. Um, but I'd like to do it in a way that helps you the maximum and doesn't have you come back here either because ABCC rejects it saying what is this it's not what our inspectors say you've got or to have you decide you really want to do the same operation that was going on before and this restricts you in some way so might I suggest that rather than, than our going forward right now that we put this on for the next meeting and in the meantime between now and the next meeting we rec you work with the town administrator to resolve the paperwork so that we have it exactly right what do you think of that idea can we just change it right now the one box that has the wrong number in it and put it the right number in it yeah i'm, I'm good with that I, I am too. I'm, the only thing I'm uncomfortable with is licensing you for 15,000 square feet of alcohol sales if that building's only 3,200 square feet on its first floor. Um, you're obviously not going to sell alcohol out in the parking lot and in the kitchen and all right. the other places. So right. um, yeah. that's that's kind of the discrepancy here. And I don't know. I mean, I, I think you said you were provided with the numbers. I don't know if if there's a way to check those numbers quickly here? Or? I mean, I believe the what the the ABCC has licensed has been the whole property. That's where that number comes, the 15,000 number comes from. And we... That's, the lot is way bigger than 15,000 square feet, so it's that number may relate to something, but it's not obvious what it relates to to me anyway. Plus the parking lot with the... Well, so you I, I, identify yourself, I'm sorry. Uh, Jennifer Ziskin. Um, less the parking lot that it would not include if it were not the parking lot not the out just the actual the I don't know the, the driveway the, the septic field the yeah no I mean field. well the the driveway I mean the uh, patio is 2400 square feet this says you don't have the patio in your application either um, I, and I'm kind of with Paul on this which is I, I'm you know I welcome you to the town I think this is going to be a great uh, you know, uh, have some uh, some new thoughts and uh, some excitement about a a change in the inn, uh, which has served us well for for many years, and I think it's a valuable institution in the town. And you know, we want to see it go forward, but I wouldn't want to pass something onto the state that isn't what you wanted. And yet, I'm uncomfortable approving something based on this number when I've got such a different number on the application form. Okay, all right, Mike? Yeah, Peter. Yeah, so I, I share your state concerns, Mike, and, and I also think Paul's advice is very good advice. If uh, the applicants could follow 
how are we still uh, treating this out before we actually take a vote? And I would add to that that the Sherburne Inn is, is a great institution in this community. I mean, we definitely want to see a vibrant, successful inn. We want to work with you. And we truly meant that we welcome you here in our community. Um, you become a very important part of our community. It's a great amenity for all our citizens and for the whole region. All but one. All but one. Um, I mean, the so only, we do want to work with you, right. and, and so this isn't meant to give you a hard time. It's, I'm, I'm a lawyer, and so I'm used to looking at details, right. and sometimes it's the details that cause a problem. I'm, I'm trying to signal to you that, that, that uh, from the overall point of view, I'm in favor of the transfer and getting this done and, and, and helping you get going. But what I'm saying is that because the details are a little off here in the paperwork that I envision as a lawyer that there's going to be some problems for you, it might work better for you if we do it right at the beginning and go to the state with everything completely in order so it's a completely routine approval and that you have everything you want. I want to be sure you, if you want the patio that you've got the patio. I want to be sure if you want the second floor you got the second floor. We have no problem with allowing you to have all that. The ABCC is going to look at not only the existing license but it's also going to look at the application. And the application, because it contains a lot of information about you and all that kind of stuff, they're going to be vetting things about you and your background and all of that, your suitability, that um, if the application has got something different from the license that we give you, that's just asking for, for trouble for you. So it might make sense for you to make some amendments not for us to start crossing things out because you've asked us to do it, but rather you clean this up the way you want it and 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 come back to our next meeting. This is my suggestion. I mean, the only issue we have with that, and we're more than happy to do it, is that this is a time-sensitive uh, uh, transaction. I mean, there are times and. As you know, as a lawyer, there are times, and we have to a certain amount of time to transfer the liquor license from the current owners to ourselves. So every delay in getting the, the license application to the ABCC is a possibility of, for us, is a risk of uh, losing the deal, you know. So, and once it goes off to them, there is no set time that it takes for them to, to approve the transfer. So if we've made one error on the application, and we all see and... We realize that the uh, inn has been running under a 15,000 square foot, um, you know, authority to sell alcohol on the premises, and we continue. We would like to continue to do it as such, without selling alcohol in the parking lot, without selling it. And if we don't have to sell it in the room, then that's fine with me. You know, if, if that's what that means. But we do. We would like to continue as it's been run and continue, you know, selling alcohol in a responsible manner to whatever customer chooses, whatever the state and town has allowed for the last 20 some odd years. So well, here's that's, our, that's our only, um, you know, here's a, reason for not coming back. Here's a suggestion to my colleagues. What about approving this subject to the applicant, cleaning up the application and I think that's the work. Well, so, so here, here's my only concern. I think they actually didn't make a mistake. This looks like the accurate numbers based on their floor plan. I have no idea where the 15,000 number comes from. And so I guess, you know, I would be comfortable approving this 3,000 that they request. And if the state has a reason to grant 15,000 when they've only asked for 3,000 and the building's only 3,000 square feet, then I guess the state can do that. Our um, 
I'll have to send that inspector. Out. Our property tax card shows it was 9,800 square feet. Okay, so I mean, there you go. That's the but whole the building. finished area is That's the whole building, including square. probably the wine cellar in the basement and the rooms on the second floor and the kitchen and everything. So it's clearly not 15,000 square feet on two floors. This says one building approximately 15,000 square feet. So at some point in the past, it sounds like the wrong number was put in there. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like to me. So I guess, you know, may, maybe we've had a long discussion that amounts to... Maybe to Mr. Nothing. Taylor's house was included in the original. <laughs> should be. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, over there. <laughs> um, can, can, can I just ask you a couple questions um, of in terms of your existing licensing and your track record and everything sure, like that? Have there been any incidents or anything? Okay. And how long have you held the license in Brookline? Uh, almost 11 years in December. Okay. Oh, we actually had a commendation from the Brookline uh, Town Police for our active role in, um, you know, they sent in someone, the ABCC and the Town of Brookline Police Department send people in and to, uh, you know, make sure you're adhering to all the laws and we've been commended for our response to that, those tests. So, oh, that's great. Good, yeah. good. Do you have any licenses before Brookline? No. Okay, great. Um, I don't have any more questions. I guess there's another public comment. Yes. Could you come up, Elliot? Yes. yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Only at Taylor, 30 North Main Street. Every year, the uh, Sherbin Inn comes before the Board of Selectmen asking to stay open New Year's Eve. And uh, I guess I, I don't know what you've granted in the past, but. Uh, New Year's Eve will be here very shortly, and I don't know whether you can grant them tonight, even though I want you to shut the place down, but uh, you might get this over with by saying they can stay open as they have in the past. Uh, I have not had any objection to this uh, New Year's uh, staying open. Of course, on New Year's, they're not apt to be outdoors. But uh, we never know. <laughs> but uh, I just mentioned it. Thank you, Elliot. Time's running out, so you might uh, check into it. Thank you. Thank you. So, I, I mean, I guess I'm prepared to pass this application along as is to the state for approval if, if the rest of the board wants to do that. It sounds like it's a time-sensitive issue for them. It sounds like they're comfortable with... Uh, you know, the, the size of the building, and I think it makes sense that the size of the building is the size that they're serving alcohol in, and not something that's bigger than the building, so. But that don't include the patio? Oh, I, I think that, that would include the patio, too. The patio is 2,400 square feet, and they're asking for 3,000. So they're that, asking for 3,600 square feet, yeah. So that leaves only 1,200 feet inside the building? <coughs> no, it's not 1,200 feet inside the building. I'm just going by their numbers here, Paul, which is um, on this wrinkled piece of paper, 3,532 square feet. So I'll amend my motion to say 3,500. I'll say the application is filed with the addition of the patio, if that's what you're looking for, with the addition of the patio. Okay. Okay. Uh, to to uh, in response to their their plea to move this thing along, I'll second that motion to. Grant what was presented, adding 2,400 square feet for the patio, with the same hours of operation as is spelled out in the original license. Okay. Any further discussion, Peter? No, well, that's not a good plan to Okay. Uh, so we'll take a vote. Uh, Peter, let's let me go. Okay, Selectman Durant says aye. And I, Selectman Jarmo is aye. So uh, we'll pass that along to the state, that application. Now we'll open the hearing. I guess it's open, but now we'll call the next hearing, which is on the application of, make sure I get the name right, Million D Inc. Okay, and Jennifer, that's you? Okay, so we'll have Jennifer Ziskin speak to that application. Hi, I'm Jennifer Ziskin. Um, I co-own Lamora in Brookline with Joshua Ziskin. Um, and I'm here today with the intent to run the Sherborne out as it has been run um, in the past. Okay. 
So same hours, same everything? Yes. Okay. So we'll open it to the public. Anybody in the public have a, a question or comment? or Mr. Taylor, you got to come up, though. You're going to get your exercise. Whoops. Almost. All right. <laughs> Uh, Elliot Taylor, 30 North Main Street, 150 feet from the Sherbin out, out. Again, I will say, as long as the Sherbin Inn keep shining their lights on my house and having outdoor parties, I'm opposed to any special licenses or privileges to either the out or the Sherbin Inn. Okay, thank you. Anybody else with input on this application for the Sherbin out? Okay, uh, Selectman Caruso, anything? Okay. I didn't hear a word he said. He said he welcomed the new owners and wished them much, much success and blah, 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 application. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, you should pause between each word. Uh, same hours of operation, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday, 12 noon to 6 p.m. on Sunday. And 800 square feet. Okay. And, and uh, Peter, this is Mike speaking. Uh, you know, I also welcome you, and I uh, think this is another great institution, and um, you know, and also a you know a lively, thriving business that provides a service to the town. And um, you know, I have no concerns about this application. Have you run a package store before? So this is going to be a new venture for you. Did we have the? Uh, Police Department review the layout. Any changes in the layout? I don't think so. You ch planning any changes in the layout? So it's, so it's going to be exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Good. So I'll move to approve. Okay. Second. All right. We have a motion and second. Uh, select, uh, all, selectman Crusoe. All right. Selectman Durancis. Aye. And I'm I also. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Do we have to sign something yes. here? Yeah. Okay. While we're signing it, I do want to mention that the operation of a package store is very different from the operation of a restaurant. And there are all kinds of uh, training courses that you can take that would make your life easier. Uh, yeah, I have a pen. Particularly, we, we don't want to see any, any uh, teenagers, underage people, yeah, yeah. getting alcohol at any package store in town. And I, I think we've got the prior owner of the Sherburn Inn, uh, Dave Sorter, here, and just wanted to thank him for many years of uh, great service to the town, operating the inn, and uh, being a great citizen for the town of Sherman. Hey. Hey.